What is an overcurrent? What do we actually mean when we talk about overcurrents? In this Learn Electrics video, we will look at this question. New starters in the trade and even more experienced electricians will get confused by the different terms. What is an overcurrent or an overload? What is the difference between a short circuit and an earth fault? And why is it wrong to say that we have an earth short or even a short in the earth wire? What do the wiring regulations say? If we look in definitions, we will find that an overcurrent is a current exceeding the rated value. But that doesn't tell us a lot. An overcurrent is a general heading for a number of faults that can occur in an electrical installation. The faults all draw excess current above what is considered the circuit's normal or designed current. We can say that an overcurrent is just that, a current over and above the normal current. So why all the different names? We have three types of overcurrent and each name will tell us how much fault current might flow and between which parts of the installation the current is flowing. These are overload, short circuit and earth faults and it is important that we learn the correct terminology. All three names are types of overcurrent and all will make the fuse blow or the breaker trip. They just do it differently. Let's begin with overload. With overload there is nothing wrong with the circuit. The electricity, the current, is where it should be. Electrical current is flowing along the correct path through the installation. There is just too much of it. But if we look at short circuits and earth faults, we will find that these two types are very similar. The current is not flowing where it should be. It is in the wrong part of the installation and is not following the normal path. Something is wrong with the circuit. We can begin by looking at overload. This sounds like overcurrent, but don't get them confused. Overload is just one type of overcurrent. With an overload, the current, the electricity, is exactly where it should be. The current is following the correct path, the correct route through the circuit to the appliances. There is nothing wrong or broken with the actual physical parts of the circuit. The cables are still in the correct places, the joints are still tight and the appliances are still working correctly. The problem is you or the customer. Someone has plugged too many appliances into the sockets or tried to make equipment work too hard. We've all seen examples of multiple extension leads or multi sockets filled with plugs. We can't just keep adding more equipment and more extension leads onto that single wall socket. Eventually the fuse will blow or the breaker will trip. This is overload. We've added too much load. It is, as the description says, overloaded. So we know now what can cause an overload. It is too many loads connected into the circuit for the size of fuse or circuit breaker that is installed. Usually this overload is only a few amps over the fuse or breaker rating. If the excess load is removed after just a few minutes, then most times the circuit will settle itself down again without actually tripping and the customer will have no idea that there was an overload. But an overload of long duration can cause overheating of circuit components, especially the conductors. After several minutes, this will cause the breaker to trip in order to protect the circuit. The fuse or circuit breaker is there to protect the conductors from damage and fire caused by overloads. Remember, an overload is often just a few amps greater than the fuse rating and may take several minutes to cause the breaker or fuse to operate. A short circuit is completely different. Let's look at this. In this example, we have a cocker circuit protected by a 32 amp protective device. There are no faults on the circuit. Looking at just one cocker ring, we see that it has a resistance or impedance of 45 ohms and each of the line and neutral conductors has a resistance of half an ohm. Current flows along the line conductor through the fuse, through the cocker ring where it loses its energy as it makes the ring hot and then flows back along the neutral. Using Ohm's law, we can calculate the current flowing. 
230 volts divided by 46 ohms gives us a current of 5 amps, far less than a 32 amp breaker. All is OK. Let's have a short circuit on this cooker now. Someone has put a nail into the wall and straight through the line and neutral conductors. The electricity, the current, will now flow through the fuse to the nail, along the nail and back along the neutral. The current will effectively bypass the resistance of the cooker. All we are left with now is the resistance of part of the wiring, which in this example we have said is just 0 0.3 ohms. If the current is bypassing the cooker, how much current is flowing? 230 volts divided by 0 0.3 ohms is a massive 766 amps. That little 32 amp breaker is going to trip almost instantly and make the circuit safe. So, a short circuit is completely different to an overload. Hundreds of amps of current will flow. The breaker will trip almost instantly. The current is not following the correct path or route through the circuit. Something is wrong with the actual physical parts of the circuit. Something is broken or damaged. Something has happened. The current is travelling from the line to the neutral without going through the load, or in a three-phase system, the current could be travelling from one phase to another without going through the load. How do short circuits happen? Well, how many ways can you get the line and neutral wires to touch each other? It could be insulation breakdown with age, or mechanical stresses and damage to the insulation by nails. There could be physical damage to the accessories, or cuts to the insulation when installing or maintaining cables. When we screw all the covers down, parts and cables may begin to touch. Poor installation methods can be a cause. For example, too much insulation is exposed, or inadequately tightened joints and other poor workmanship that allows conductors to work loose and touch. And installing conductors in the wrong terminals and lack of competence or attention to detail are other causes. If it helps to remember the different types of overcurrents, imagine this for a short circuit. Imagine the line and neutral wires being twisted together, because that is what you have in essence. The line conductor is connected directly to the neutral conductor. Short circuit. The line and neutral are connected together, somewhere in the circuit. The third type of overcurrent is the earth fault. If we begin with a fault-free scenario and use the same cooker ring again, we can see that the 5 amps of working current flows along the line and neutral wires, but nothing along the earth conductor. The earth or CPC is connected to the metallic casing of the cooker. Now let's have an earth fault. Something happens and the line conductor makes contact with the metallic parts of the cooker. This effectively bypasses the cooker ring and the cooker ring resistance. Earth fault current flows along the line conductor through the metallic casing to the earth or CPC wire that is attached to the cooker, and this will be a low resistance path. If we say that the total resistance of the line and earth path is only 0 0.4 ohms, how much earth fault current will flow, and will it cause the 32 amp breaker to trip? Using Ohm's law again, 230 volts divided by 0 0.4 ohms is 575 amps. The circuit breaker, or fuse, is going to operate in tiny fractions of a second, almost instantly. During an earth fault, the current is flowing to earth. The current is not following the correct path or route through the circuit. Something is wrong or broken with the actual physical parts of the circuit, and this is allowing current to pass from the line or phase wires into the earth, and current flow will normally be several hundred amps. Lots of things can cause an earth fault. For example, a breakdown in the insulation of the line or a phase conductor that allows current to flow to an earthed metallic part, or current flow from a line or phase conductor directly to the CPC if they touch. Consider poorly installed cables, joints not tightened, cuts and lack of sleeving or insulation around bare earth conductors, allowing contact with live parts is common. Then there are mechanical stresses, vibration and damage to equipment, causing cables to move and expose copper conductors, 
or just wear the insulation away with continual prolonged vibration. A visual reminder of an earth fault that always worked for me when I was learning looked something like this. The line and CPC are connected together. It's telling me that somewhere in that circuit the line and earth or a phase and earth have found electrical continuity. It might be direct cable to cable contact. It might be through metalwork, but somewhere there is continuity. And with earth faults, we should expect significant current to flow, hundreds of amps. We must look at the response curves of circuit breakers and fuses next, since it is the response curve that determines what type of overcurrent the breaker is actually looking at. The response curve dictates if the breaker operates immediately or whether it can take its time and trip after 10 minutes or so. This is a typical response curve taken from the wiring regulations book. Each type of fuse or breaker will have their own page and each rating of fuse or breaker will have its own curve. These are the curves that all manufacturers will make a breaker work to. It is their standard. Let's simplify this. This is a typical time and current curve for a circuit breaker called a response curve. How does a curve work? What does it tell us? All the curves will have a knee, a distinct change in rate of the curve that looks like a knee. The curvy part is the area of slow response, but at the knee, the curve suddenly becomes a straight vertical line and everything changes. The knee then is the point at which the slow response changes to an instant response, instant tripping, and this is often around 0.1 seconds with modern circuit breakers. The two coloured halves of this chart show the slow and quick response areas. Looking at an overload response, a slow response, we can see that we have a 10 amp breaker installed. Too many plugs and equipment are connected and the 10 amp circuit is drawing 20 amps in this example. The breaker is not going to trip anytime soon. The curve tells us it will take about 3 minutes for it to trip. If we were to disconnect most of the loads before 3 minutes and bring the current to below 10 amps, in this case, the breaker will start to cool down and is unlikely to trip. But what happens with a short circuit or earth fault trip? Using the same 10 amp breaker, we see that we have a rapid rise in current through the device. With hundreds of amps of fault current, we very quickly exceed the 50 amp limit of current for a 10 amp device. As soon as the current exceeds 50 amps, the device operates, and all this happens between 0.1 and 0.4 seconds from the fault appearing, an almost instant response once the knee is reached. Looking at an actual curve again, we can see the curved overload part for a slow response. We can see the knee that divides the graph into two, and we have the short circuit part and the earth fault part that are the vertical line of instant tripping. Just to remind ourselves of how much current the different overcurrents will have, an overload is just a few amps above the breaker or fuse rating. Not a lot, and it gets a slow response. Short circuit and earth fault currents are very high currents, hundreds of amps, and they have an instant response. And lastly, a word on correct terminology. Overcurrent is the general term for too much current flowing through a part of the installation. Overload is a specific case of too much being plugged into an otherwise healthy circuit. Disconnect some of the plugged in equipment and the circuit will return to normal. Short circuit describes the fault condition of current flowing from the line to the neutral without going through the appliance or load. It takes a short cut, hence short circuit. Earth fault is the specific case of current flowing from the line conductor to the earth or CPC conductor, either directly or through the metalwork of the appliance. It is flowing to earth. We should not describe an earth fault as a short to earth or earth shorted out. This is borrowing words from two different types of fault and is best avoided. Officially, we either have a short circuit between line and neutral or we have an earth fault between line and earth, but not a short to earth. 
We hope that you found this video useful and informative. Hopefully, it's added a little more knowledge into your mental toolbox. Thank you for watching. Your support is greatly appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.